Hello, welcome to Footprint. My name is Samuel Atamensa. This is going to be another interesting edition of the program. Let's take a short break. When we come back, we'll be zooming in to our man for the moment. Born on November 22, 1941, at Efijasi Kofuidia in the Eastern Region, Hakman Ousuajiman was a senior executive at the United Nations, the first national treasurer of the New Patriotic Party and the former member of parliament for New Jabin North constituency. Hakman Ousuajiman is currently the chairman of the Council of Elders of the New Patriotic Party. Our guest, Hakman Ousuajiman, tells his story now. Welcome back. Now you know who we are talking about, the Honorable Hakman Ousu Ajman. And um, we, I won't even uh, threaten to go through his CV because that will be um, as huge as an encyclopedia. Um, he's been a man of many parts, and, and, and believe me, uh, many parts. Um, a man who's been in, in, in politics and, and in, in professional life for as long as you can, you can figure. Um, of all the things that people will say about politicians, I don't think that you'll get anything to say about him um, that is negative. But he will walk us through um, the path of his own footprints uh, for us to learn a thing or two. Honorable, it's good to see you again. Well, it's been a long time. Uh, yes, yes, yes. But that's, that's bad on my part. <laughs> uh, we seem to get busy chasing everything except what yeah. we need. <laughs> when, when you were doing your postgraduate course in UK, <laughs> I, 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 I even got in touch more often, more frequently than when you came back. <laughs> So it's better to be there than I can, can always be speaking to you. No, I, I, I repent. <laughs> I <laughs> repent. I repent. Thank you so much for, for, for welcoming us to your home today. Um, but so Hakman Uswajiman is, is, is a name that is known to many in, in this country, trust me. Um, but you, you are a politician without controversy. And yet everybody knows you. <laughs> and yet you have occupied the most sensitive um, um, positions in politics and, and it, it, it's you hardly find people like that um, is it your mother or your father who 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 do you attribute this quality to <laughs> <laughs> so um, interestingly both my father and mother were activists really okay. so uh, I don't know but I think in all these things I've been guided by a simple principle do what is right and what's wrong, don't do it. So I, th I suppose that's why I haven't gotten myself into any controversies. <laughs> but I have also been quite um, active in promoting um, issues to do with democracy and whatever you and the rest. So from, even from my university days, I entered the university in 1961. That was my first year before tech became University. university and then subsequently was called University of Science and Technology then eventually Kwame Nkrumah University and it's gone through many metamorphoses and that's what it is and there I started my political career in a oh, way. So you started this whole political thing when you're in, a, in, in the university? Yes sir because I'm uh, I was a member from the whole JCR mm -hmm. then I became eventually uh, General Secretary of the National Union of Ghana Student Nooks. Just hold it right there. Mm -hmm. you know, um, in those days, anybody who held that kind of position in Nooks was supposed to be feared. <laughs> <laughs> it means just a man on a mission. <laughs> but, but tell me, are you Achim or Ashanti? What oh. am I? You know. uh, we come, we are New Jabin. Okay, Asante. We, in well, the Eastern well I don't know. I call it Akan because we don't belong to the bigger Ashanti. Um, oh, okay. Region because our paramount chief is not part of Asante Man, Asante Man Council. Okay. I once asked Utun for um, where do we belong to? And he says, because our man was not invited to the to Kesh, um, no, sorry, the big... Um, Akwesidai. Yeah, Akwesidai, and he said, well, because you don't really 
have not owe allegiance to oh, the, okay. the throne. So basically, uh, people, uh, my friends call me that we are like bats. You know, when we migrated from uh, Ashanti on the way down, stopped by and eventually settled in the, what we now call New Jabin, partly land given to us by the Achim uh, people and partly by the Equiapim people. So it's been difficult, okay. but I, it, I make life very simple for myself by saying I'm an Akan. Mm, that's it. That's it. So, yeah. so typically you are from the Eastern region. That Both is parents. Correct. That is correct. Both parents from Jabi. New Jabi. New Jabi. Yes. Both parents from there's Jabi. old Jabi, so you always have to make sure you say New Jabi. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, so I'm just asking. So, mother, father from New Jabi. That is correct. That's from the same time, Fijasi. All from a Fijasi. Yes, Kufuridia Fijasi. It's not a small town. Mm -hmm. So you are born in Kufuridia. In a way, I was born in um, Fijasi. Okay. Those days, there uh, there were not there weren't many hospitals and whatever you there. So my Tell grandfather, my grand uncle, uh, was the one who was the uh, almost like the midwife okay. for all these things. And then immediately, I was but at that time we were resident in Begro, in the eastern region also, um, Akwa Begro. So. Sometimes I claim that I can also be a candidate for any position in Belgrade. Yes, yeah. Sir. But mm -hmm. that place used to be very cold, right? Sorry? Very cold. It used to be cold, Belgrade. Well, Up no, there, we, right? we had we, no Belgrade. The, no, not a, we, we, we were noted for huge cuckoo yams. Mankey. <laughs> Mankey production. Mankey, yeah. Uh, it was quite an eye opener to be there for. Uh, so that's um, from Kofuridia, and then you get to Osiem. Is it Osiem? Yes, area? and then you turn, and right. turn right. That is correct. To Begro. Okay. Uh, my father's brother, the, um, his, his group are the royals of Efijasi. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. The Britufo are the royals of Efijasi. So his brother, his cousin, was the chief, and he was distilled. And my father, wanted to succeed him, but they wouldn't allow him to. So it was quite a bit of rumples, a bit of difficulty, and a bit of fighting. So virtually, initially, it was almost like uh, uh, my father was sort of um, asked to leave the scene so that then, then his cousin then became the chief, the and chief, then we yeah. had peace in that area. So, so you did primary education in Efijasi? I started at Begro until, um, at, we call it at that time, Standard 4, mm -hmm. at be about 13, 14. Then I came to Kofridia, went to Sakodia Memorial School, uh, which was a privately owned school by the Sakodia Sarko, the people. And then from there, I went to St. Augustine's. St. Augustine's, which year? 1957. I entered St. Augustine's January, and I finished in 61. But we had a, a gain of some six months after we changed um, the schedule for schools. Yeah. Instead of January, December, mm. it became September, June, so June yeah. and that sort of thing. And so, but I, I got to St. Augustine really by accident mm -hmm. because my mother and father were not highly educated, we're not educated. Let's, my father could speak a little English, my mother was zero. So let me take this, at the time when you, you were attending Sarkodia Memorial, you lived in Kofodia? Yes, please. Okay, what were some of the influences in Kofodia at the time, in terms of education, in terms of, you know? Um, we were, the Sarkodia Memorial School was near the Zongo. Mm -hmm. So the people, the people that I hung out with, that I played with, we well, meet people like Suleshitu, if you ever know. The name. footballer? Yeah. Kasum Suleshitu, the boxer. Yeah. And uh, later oh, on. Suleshitu was so, a boxer, rather, or footballer. I remember Kasum the was the uh, Kasum was the boxer. The boxer. Suleshitu was the footballer. Very good footballer, yes. I remember. And they, they played for some of them, for the national team, actually. That's correct. And then there was um, Sunday. Ibrahim Zongo. Sunday. Yes, yes, they were also. I was. Oh, they were all Kofodia guys. Yes, we all live in the Zongo area. But my father had a show. My father was a goldsmith, 
and that doesn't make them very rich. I, I was surprised that Goldsmith had no money. <laughs> and uh, so when I closed school at two o'clock, he only allowed me to go to school so, so that I would come to the workshop and help. and help. And so there was a compromise between him and my mother. So I went to Sarko there where we finished at two o'clock. Then I'll go to the railway station be a porter, kaya kaya. Mm -hmm. you know, a porter, carry sardines and corned beef and all that sort of That wasn't worse. that difficult because most young boys were doing Yeah, we're similar. doing that yeah. from there and then we'll take it to Ascori mm -hmm. and then we'll be paid by the Lagosians. That's why the, the people we call the Lagosians, the Nigerians yeah. Yeah. at that time we call Lagosians. And so after that, then by three o'clock, I was in the workshop, we worked till about seven. And so I really knew how to handle well, money. I was a good apprentice at that time. Wow. And so going to school. Um, uh, when but at it, that time, why didn't you consider going into the, the gold industry? Since your father was, in the, he was a goldsmith. I was a little boy. And um, I didn't realize, I realized that my father was not exactly, uh, he, he was in difficulty. I mean, we have uh, two rooms for a family of eight children, and all eight of us slept in one room on but the floor. You, but yes. you were happy sleeping. And so, no, I, was, I wasn't happy. I thought that uh, if I followed his line, <laughs> I would never make it. <laughs> and so mm -hmm. there, there was a compromise between him and my mother that I should go to secondary school. Which secondary school? Nobody knew. So a friend of mine filled it. At that time, they called it the Common Entrance Examination. And uh, some, it was the, when I got to the place to choose which secondary school I wanted to, I didn't know anything. So wow. I, the, the boy sitting by me had written Snogerson's. And I said, where's Snogerson's? He said, Cape Coast. Why are you choosing? He said, oh, my brother is there. He says it's a good school. So I still wrote Snogerson's. <laughs> <laughs> so you, you had no knowledge of St. Augustine's College? No. But somebody sitting next to you wrote mm -hmm. St. Augustine. Amiao, it's called Amiao, yeah. And <laughs> I wrote it. And then we went to the, for the, in, after the exams, we went for the interview, and there were all these Roman fathers sitting there. And they were very nice, uh, Father Glenn. They were most welcoming. And I wasn't the Catholic. So, so you went to the interview in Cape Coast? No, oh. at Accra, rural, rural school. Okay. They, all the eastern region, we had to come to Accra. And that was the first time I came to Accra. Mm-hmm from uh, Kofridi. So your, your father Fijazi, brought you? Fijazi. That was the first time. Did your father bring you? No, no. My you father, came on your no, own? No, my father didn't. He just put me in the, in the uh, bone shaker. <laughs> <laughs> I asked them to drop me there. <laughs> then when I, I got to that place, then to ask where was it? You see, the, the lorry park is very close to the rural boys' school mm -hmm. uh, in the corner there. Mm -hmm. So we, I, I asked them, they said, that's the way to go. And I went there. And they finished and they went back to the Bolshevik and went back to FJRC. Your first time in Accra, you came alone? Yes. And you were around 14, 14 yeah, years? Yeah, I wasn't very, uh, well, that, was, that was in uh, 1956, so I was, more, I was about 15, yeah. 14, 15, yeah. And yeah. you couldn't speak Ghana? No, but later on, later on when I was working my father at the goldsmith shop, his, his colleagues, came from Pung. Yeah. So that's where I pick my ga from. I can now, I, and now I can speak a reasonable level of uh, yeah. ga. Of course, you're a politician. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me. So eventually your results came. Mm -hmm. And I say I have passed. And then that's when I came for the interview. Mm -hmm. After I had passed, I came for the interview. And then for the first time, I was bought a pair of uh, Achimota sandals. I, because before then I came to the interview barefooted. I mean, I had no sandals. No, no, no. Let's let's <laughs> let's take it slowly. Now slow motion. Yes. You sat in the bone shaker. Now yeah. the bone shaker has a wooden trotter for those of mm -hmm. you who don't know. Uh, but that's uh, free air conditioning because the air just <laughs> deals with you as as it pleases. And you came from Kofodia to Accra, walking bare, barefooted. That's what it. That's what I. That is it. And they didn't kick you out of the interview? No. We just, when it was my turn, they called me and I walked in. I, I had no shoe, nothing. Uh, I, said, I was in shorts. 
and, and uh, another short uh, sleeves um, job, like up and down, and then sat there for the interview. And then I, I am sure all the other students didn't have shoes on as well. No, quite a lot of them, like Provençal and uh, Christ, all of them had shoes on, but I did not. I okay let me not get ahead of myself <laughs> this is, so so um you finished <laughs> sat in the bone shaker and back to kufodia yes now when you went back to kufodia what did you tell your father oh he asked me how it was and i said uh, i i could answer all the questions and so but my father although he was not educated he always insisted that when you have exams you must come first or second or third. So when you are fourth or fifth, it asks you, wasn't there a human being who was first? first. Why didn't you first? <laughs> he was quite a tough guy. Yeah. Mm, very tough guy. And um, so then when the results came, they sent us the, uh, the prospectus to buy the thing. That's when they bought me my first Achimota uh, sandals. Achimota sandals. sandals. But you could walk in them? Yes. Uh, but the beginning it was difficult, and the shoe. The beginning, I, I could say that the shoe they bought me was very heavy, and I had to <laughs> down like this. But it was uh, we got eventually got on. Wow. And then, then after that, so you had after, one, one pair. Yes. Okay. One pair, and one pair of Achimoto sandals. Mm -hmm. and you didn't have Chalewate. At that time, there was no Chalewate really. Oh. No, I didn't have any. No. Okay. So when we went to see so. so Preparing to go to St. Augustine's, you bought your stuff all by yourself? Yes, um, we, um, we I had a chop box you know, made of wood and a trunk made of steel, which my mother got for me. So I bought a second-hand trunk and they painted it. A black and red. That is correct. Yeah. They I, I don't know it. whose idea that black and red thing is. <laughs> we have to find strips. the genesis of it. <laughs> the genesis of it. So then, fortunately, when the time that was, the day that we were reopening school, there were a couple of people from Kofridia who were seniors, also going to St. Augustine's. One of them was Gabi's father. Dr. Ochidakun. Yeah, Gabi Ochidakun's father. Yeah. Yes, and who passed away recently. recently yeah. And then there were the Quists, and they were also educated. They had ed an educated family, so we went with them. So they put us all together in one, again in a bowl shaker, parked the trunks in front, and we sat in the back and took all, us all the way from Kofridia to Cape Coast. And as we went along, we saw the way that it was quite an interesting. Time so, which level, at which level was Dr. Chidako? When I went to Form 1, he was in lower six. Okay. Uh -huh. Okay. Mm -hmm. Wow. So, he became... And he was, he was the godfather. They told us, they started uh, knocking our head already in Kofridi. I said, they say homo. <laughs> they, they call it the UI homo. Green yes, horn. Yes, green you horn. Knock on yes. your head in here and there. Uh -huh. And then this, my mother said, I remember my mother saying, Omiram Pacho Jambano, bro. Stop beating my child when they were at the at the lorry park and say, Oh, I'm I'm just training him because he will get worse things when he get to Cape Coast. <laughs> oh wow. Yeah, so Coast. you got to Cape Coast too for the first time. That is correct. Wow. That is correct. I am you know, not the only place I knew at that time was then a little bit of a crack coming here, Kufridia and then Begro. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That way I was, I, I was. Now tell me your first experiences when you got to St. Augustine's College. Was there anything you expected? Yeah, I, it was overwhelming. There were all these big buildings, uh, two stories, three stories, and, the, and where we call the administration block, where the priests, the Roman Catholic priests, the Irish priests lived, was very nice. And I was just started looking around like this. I was quite well. Well. And then they told me that I was in house one. Mm -hmm. So we went to look for house one. And Mr. Aqua, the governor of the central bank, yeah. was the monitor in the room they gave me. So there were about 10 of us in one room. And um, that's uh, Dr. Paul Aqua. Paul Aqua, that's the governor, the former governor. Yeah. 
he was the monitor of that place and so they started and uh, putting us through the motions and knocking our head all the time beating us and but eventually and also a champion the one who was a minister for the ndc he was with us and then he of course changed over he was one year ahead and he was one of the people who gave me plenty of knocks oh. on my head uh, also a champion from from the, the bruno side yes right? he was from brekum brekum yeah. he was in then in form two mm -hmm. and we went to form one mm -hmm. and so he was my senior Mm -hmm. You have to put your hand across and do this and lie down and go do up sit ups and all manner of things. But he left. Yeah, eventually, eventually, yeah, uh, he he went to sixth form. Oh, okay. But um, we right. had um, the, the a group called the Homos. The, that's the freshest, freshest yes. fresh people, mm -hmm. and then we did all manner of things. Okay. And eventually, a man called um, Ismon. Mm -hmm. May he rest in because Who he was, later became Professor Eastman. Sorry, Doctor Eastman. No, okay. he's um, I think a cousin of Doctor Eastman. Okay, uh, right. but he was doing. Eventually, he went to do engineering. Engineer. Okay, and I'll tell you the story there. What happened at that okay. time? Is, uh, All right. Uh, mm -hmm. So we are talking to Honorable Hackman Osu Ajman. So in the last 15, 16 minutes, you've been hearing the voice of Hackman Osu Ajman. Um, you know, I, I'm wondering why he's not called Dr. Hackman Uswajman. And any time I attempt to mention his name, Dr. Jess pops up. But hey, <laughs> we'll take a short break. When we come back, he'll walk us through his time at St. Augustine's College proper. The people he met, some of them you know, some we don't. But the significant experiences at St. Augustine's College. This is Footprint. Welcome back to the program. This is Footprint, and I am talking to Honorable Hackman Ousuajiman. Now, later on, you get to know that this man in politics has done a lot of things. But in terms of ministerial portfolios, he's been Interior Minister, he's been Works Housing, Water Resources Minister, he's foreign, been I was the Foreign Minister, foreign minister yeah. and actually, Get this, he took over from Honorable um, Paul Victor Beho, and you know, um, so that's something to say, but we'll get, we'll, we'll, we'll get there. Um, at this point, we are still in St. Augustine's College. Yes. Now, what are some of your memorable experiences in St. Augustine's? A young boy from Kufudia come to town. Now, tell me this. Your first vacation from St. Augustine's College, when you went back to Kufodia, what did you tell the girls? <laughs> <laughs> well, when we went back, uh, it was very interesting that uh, some had gone to Prempe College, Achimota, and a few other places. So we got together, really, and we formed the New Jabin uh, Students' Union. Mm -hmm. And that one, even during the vacation period, we had... Um, um, Classes. Sort of, um, Together we were doing uh, debates and whatever and the rest. Mm -hmm. And this is where I owe it to Snogerson's because there, there was something called All's Club. And you join that and, it's, and the, it's like a debating society and you pick up all manner of things. So you have to do a, quite a bit of research, go to the library and get things done. And it really helped me tremendously. Uh, coming back to, I'm now jumping your question, coming back to Snogerson, like for example, I had never eaten with cutlery. Okay. So I never knew how to eat the cutlery. It, yeah. And there was a, a teacher called Buckner. Eventually became a big artist and the director general of the uh, science education. His children was the Buckner who was in... Uh, in film. Um, in Cow Bank. Yes, and the other one who was also yeah, in uh, GBC. Yeah, coffee back and now that yeah, yes exactly now he although he was um, a lecturer in in zoology he you know taught us how to we call him the dean of discipline and he taught us how to tie a knot for it uh, and how to for the necktie it. yeah necktie how mm -hmm. to do it i've never done so never worn a necktie in my life but you got there when you got there they gave you one and then how to use the cutlery mm -hmm. and how you work your way if a set of cutleries from how do you life. do that you and still you remember can, yeah they, no he told us yeah, i mean we have to go so you uh, have the knife and then the fork, fork yes and he told us how to use it 
You can and, see the way you've done your hands means that I still remember. Because yes. some people hold it like that. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> no, he, he, he was really sophisticated. He was a fanti and very nice. sophisticated. You know, so he taught us all these things. Like when you go, you sit down at the table, you may have one, two, three, four kettle um, knives of whatever it is and have it there. And you work your way from the outside. From the, the smallest east, to the exactly. biggest. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So by the time you get to the last place, get to the inside, and of course, the dessert yeah, things yeah, are okay. there. And it was very useful. So I remember very well the first time I went to Champs Elysees when I was working for the United Nations, and every day I, I never fell out. I mean, I knew what to do yeah. and what not to do. So that I, we owe it. I mean, how to buckle your shoes, how to tie out, how to hold cutlery. And Mr. Buckner, uh, this fancy man, who became also a very famous artist. You know, Buckner, he used to, his, his, his pieces were very expensive. Mm -hmm. And then he became Director General of Science Education also. But and he so was very good. this experience, tell me, since I have known you, you've always dressed very well. Did you pick it from St. Augustine's? Not flamboyant, it, but it, very well. <laughs> In a and way, I'm not exaggerating. In a way, me, you can me, see him now. <laughs> and he's almost 80, if he's not 80 already. Sorry? You're 80 no, years. No, I'm not 80. I'm 79. Uh, that's modest, man. He's going on to 80. <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, no, when they got there, they are, they, the Kumasi boys, mm -hmm. at that time we called them the Kumasi boys, <laughs> were the ones who were coming with nice um, shirts. And there was a brand called the Vol Volta shirt, Volta. Mm -hmm. Walter shared they were nice. They would come, so you wanted to also compete with them. Uh -huh. And sometimes when the your girls from um, Holy Child or something were coming, so you get to know how to that. You must look <laughs> neat <laughs> so, to make it interesting. So this is what it is. And then having also worked in Italy with the FAO for over twenty years, mm -hmm. you mm -hmm. tend to pick up a few fashionable. Yeah, pieces, pieces here and you there. really pick them, man. But we not are to do it, and then you no, no, you don't. You right, don't. Then you you don't. <laughs> okay, so the Kumasi boys you talk about, there's some of them that's in public life in Augustine's. Oh, um, the one that we met there was um, among when well, which of them became popular, I think, uh, uh Amankwa, Amankwa, and also, um. Kwakwa and a few other people, uh, and then and then and then Professor Doctor Doctor Brobe, he was from um, the K and the one. Yes, mm -hmm. um, the professor. He was he was from uh, Dunkwa, mm -hmm. but he came through. He, he was he linked himself with the Kumasi boys. Oh, yeah. And we from Kofridia, also in a way linked ourselves with the Accra boys, mm -hmm. but the Kofridia boys were supposed to be rascals. <laughs> so they really beat us out. Then there are crowd boys, and the, there was a Dr. Sarko there, mm -hmm. who had a, a and then the Sarko the Memorial School, and then there was, of course, Flashman, that was Gabby's father. And oh, it was called Flashman. Oh, that was his nickname, Flashman. So Gabby Ochidako's father. Yes, he Flashman. knows. He knows so that Gabby... called father Flashman. <laughs> <laughs> so Gabby inherited the name. Okay. Yes, and then, so, and then also then. Uh, I think we had people from the Tad, Takrari, the Tadi boys, Tadi. who were sort of in groups, and then yeah. also those from the Volta region. But mm -hmm. we all mixed what, what, that was, Again, I'm just curious. What your, your, your own experience with the Tadi boys at the time? Because they were the seamen influences and all that. Yeah, they were the ones who were kept. I mean, some of them came with bicycles, they owned bicycles. In school? In school, yeah. Because a, a few people were what they call day students, and they came okay. from Elmina and all mm -hmm. those things. And so uh, they, they, were, they were the, the people with the, with the dough, with the cash, were the uh, uh, Kumasi boys. <laughs> and the Tardy boys were the ones who would take up their shit like this. Uh -huh. And then, they, you know, they look good. good, oh, good, good yes, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, you know, but, uh, we okay. all got on very well, and uh, nice. we learned how to... Um, uh, to the tribal dancing also mm -hmm. learn a few things from the various groups mm -hmm. and so um, it, it, it was a harmonious um, 
coexistence co yeah. uh, between the various, between the Ashanti, the Fanti, the Gans, and the Evers, and the Northerners. Because we had more Evers in Snogersons than any other tribe. Mm. Because the Catholics were coming there. I was not a Catholic, but I yeah. was still admitted there. Isn't more because the, the pass mark was high and the Evers were doing well at the time? Well, the, uh, but, uh, and also because they were Catholics, and then most okay. of the Catholics would choose. When you go to a college school in say they will always ask you to choose uh Snogersons. Okay. At that time it was the only Catholic secondary school mm -hmm. in Ghana. Okay. So there were quite a lot of them. Um Okay, so fast forward, you, you finished uh, St. Augustine's um did you go back there for sixth form? No. Okay. And uh, when we finished um some of us at that time, you know, when there was something called East Germany. Yeah, man. there was no glass notes, there was no uh, pelot striker. Uh, striker, and so East Germany was offering scholarships to some of the Ghanaian young people to go and study there. So I got uh, an award to go there, um, but we had to pay for the, um, the airfare, and my father, my parents could not afford it. So from there, I also and also at that time to get to the tech which was a technical university what the master college of technology you have to sit for a special entrance exam mm -hmm. organized by the university itself before you even sit for your o level so that one i did and i passed so they offered me a place there okay so you I didn't have to go through so you did an a level in tech tech yes okay and then uh, they offered me a place there and my father said I couldn't go to East Germany. East Germany, yeah. So I... But some of your friends went. Yes, some of them went. Mm -hmm. And eventually some of them went to Western Germany. Of course. That is uh, Dr. Admarku and uh, Brobe, Professor Dr. Dr. Brobe and a few others. So I, 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 I went to Turk and uh, uh, studied Which agriculture. Which Dr. Admarku is this? Sorry? Which Dr. Admarku? The former governor of the Central Bank. Oh, yeah. Yeah, his younger brother. Yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. right. And then the one who was also head of the psychiatric hospital, mm -hmm. also at Mark. They are all Connected. brothers. Okay. And, and, and. Right. And so, so we just went and... Um, so that took you into KNUSD. That took me to agriculture. And, uh, and you chose to do um, a BSc in, in agriculture. That's science. what I did, yes. Mm -hmm. That's what you wanted to do? Not really. But that's what they gave? Yeah, yeah, because... Um, they, they asked me to a pharmacy, and I had any personal reasons why I didn't want to do that, which I don't think is for public consumption. Oh, okay. And, but I said, I, I went there for one month, two months, and I told him I think I would rather do agriculture. Oh, you actually went into the pharmacy? I went there for two months, yeah. So my, my, my bond, at that day they, they were saying bond, they, my bond, that took me to... Tech, tech was ready for pharmacy to read pharmacy and you know we had which, that year, which, which year again would this be uh, i'm talking about 61 who 1961 and so um uh, 1961. you know at that time the government paid for everything yeah everything we have each one person to a room very nicely done and everything and then they paid for your school fees. You they paid nothing. But on top of that, they gave you 120 pounds pocket money. <coughs> and 120 pounds in certain time was, very, was mm. quite a bit. So the books, everything was free. So, but if they had, they had asked me to pay, I would never have entered tech because my father could not ever have afforded uh, the expenses. Yeah. I mean, he, he couldn't afford the plane ticket, so that's yeah, to, well yeah, stated. Yeah, so we couldn't have, but it, uh, I, I, that we owe to the government of the day at that time, despite the fact that eventually uh, they turned against us, the students, and arrested some of us and put us in jail. But that one is a story that I think we must mm -hmm. see, and I will have, we will go in the full length of So tell me, discussion. so 61, you're in tech. And you, you spent the, the, what would be the next four years in tech, yes. right? Yes, uh, four years uh, at Independence Hall. Mm -hmm. And after that, I came to work in the Ministry of Agriculture. Okay, so in tech, um, Indies, you went to Indies Hall and then 
you became, um, you got into students' politics at some point. Yes, that okay. is correct. Um, I started from the hall, the independence hall. Yeah. It is, then went on to become secretary and whatever you then. So, so you had uh, a hall, what? Hall secretary? Yes, I was hall secretary also before mm -hmm. that. And then at that time, there were only two universities. So if we had a chat, the president of NUCS, National Union of Ghana Students, from Legon, mm -hmm. then the secretariat of NUCS we'll was tech. domiciled at Tech. And so this one is a story worth telling. So at that time, Justice Kluge mm -hmm. was uh, president of NUCS, and he was from Legon. He was reading law at Legon. So the secretariat had to come to Tech. tech yeah. And um, Mr. Eastmon, the one that I referred to, yeah, that I was, uh, yeah. was then uh, me and him were competing for the for the for the secretary generalship mm -hmm. of of Nukes. And um, he was four years, five years ahead of me in Snogerson's, and I thought it was a bit. Uh, out of the ordinary for a little boy who was there now to go and challenge him. But my group were supporting me, like Honorable Safumafu and all those. He was about two years behind me. All of them were pushing me, you know, we, they, you know, we would take over. Anyway, so we went voting, secret voting. In all sincerity, I said, I can't vote for myself. So I voted for Ismon. <laughs> and Ismon won the election by one vote. That was my vote. So then I was made Assistant Secretary General. And whilst at that time, Nkrumah then was be, mo, becoming more and more dictatorial, mm -hmm. um, he wanted to be live president. There was only going to be one party. All parties were proscribed and all these things. So we, the students, I mean, got up and said, no, this is not right. And then um, they started arresting us. So they arrested Kluge by Preventive Detention Act. I'm sure you know about it, Preventive mm -hmm. Detention. They took Kluge, they took Ismon, they took uh, the, um, Amisa, and they took them away. So then we were left there, and I then be, took over as General Secretary of Nooks. And in the night, we would drive from uh, Kumasi to Cape Coast. At that time, Cape Coast was a university college, an affiliate of Legon, or come to Legon. So we had quite a bit of this thing done. And so eventually, they issued a preventive detention act uh, order against me to be arrested and sent to and so on. Mm. And uh, of course, I ran off and I was sleeping in the in, in the farm, that means I was doing agriculture, so I sleep in the farm or <laughs> changing my sleep every day. And so when eventually I was arrested, I was oh, taking. So they, they arrested. Eventually you. they got me after about four days. Oh, okay. I was, they were doing. A, we were, they were trying to chase and then my friend Trini Boy and all of them were hiding me all over the place. And uh, tell me, so how did they catch you finally? Sorry. How did they catch you? Oh, I came. I came. I, I think I was hungry, and I came. I, they, I told. I was told everything was over. Then we got there. They arrested. And they took me to a Ija police station. Uh -huh. And R. P. Bafu, bless his soul, was the vice chancellor. Was the vice right. chancellor, mm -hmm. very close friend of Nkrumah. Mm -hmm. So apparently, he had gone to tell Nkrumah, and really said, "Leave the students to really express themselves." And that's how uh, democracy works, like that. And then, so when I was, I was told that he said, um, "This is youthful impetuosity." Please, <laughs> <laughs> I remember that very well. So, instead of being put to uh, put in the train to go to Nsamam, I was detained at um, Aija, Aija place. And afterwards, he got me out. But the people who were sent to Nsamam, this is why some of us cannot really. Uh, be very overly excited when we talk about Ma. the students that were sent to Swam. According to them, people from Romania were the one doing. The, they gave them injections and things like that. 
and he distorted them. When Ismon eventually came out, his neck was huge. And Kluge and all of them, they were being given all manner of injections. They claim, they, all these are reported speech. As they say in Akan, Omu Bua, Nam Sme Bua. And then, but when Ismon, for example, was finally released after the inter intervention of uh, uh, Dr. R.P. Bafo, came with a big neck. What happened? Said, well, this is what was happening. We were tortured and this and that. And he was reading engineering. In engineering, there were two types of engineering. You must know this. There was an engineering degree, that's what was half math and the rest, right? And there was an engineering diploma. The man was doing an engineering degree. When he came up, he couldn't no more, he, he couldn't pursue anything. His brain, his brain was some, something had happened to him. Wow. And so Bafu was very angry. So he said, okay, if you cannot do the degree, then go and do the diploma. And diploma where the people who had been in the uh, technical uh, colleges and came, mm -hmm. and they, when you finish, I got a diploma in engineering. You push him to that place, there too, and I can say it on authority, he couldn't follow up. He said he was always, his mind was always foggy and was confused. And so at the end of the day, uh, Dr. Bafu said, let's give man a diploma. So the, although he did not really pass, mm -hmm. gave him a diploma, and when he finished uh, school, he was given to uh, VRA, he worked in Akutumbo. Within a matter of years, he was dead. Oh. Yes, yes, this one died. I, don't, I remember very well when they came there and um, to that place to tech. And after um, trying to insult all the students and threatening us, the, and the Boateng, who was the Minister of Education, I remember Boateng, Boateng, Paul Boateng's father. Paul Boateng's father, yeah. Minister of Education. He came there to the hall, and they were very well. At that time, you go to, with your gown, and you sat down, and you were served by stewards. You don't have to go and line up. and four course meal and everything and so when he came is the high table the lecturers and one or two of the seniors will sit there and i remember him very well when he came there the following day was talk, addressing the students he says when i went to independence hall and i tasted the food i couldn't believe my eyes <laughs> and the students said that you do it with your eyes <laughs> you know and these were the people who were very autocratic, really. Yeah. And, uh, you know, arrested quite a lot of... I remember one story where the preventive PDA, and nobody can challenge me on that, it was a bit, the Bais Boachi, he had a girlfriend, and the DC, the district commissioner, at that time they called him, what you call the DC is now, district commissioner, wanted the, also wanted... Uh, the uh, they, two of them were competing the for the girl, mm -hmm. and the boy won. When we went to school, we asked for him, and they said, here, yeah, he's been arrested. For winning? For, as PDA. Yeah, know, so he was arrested for winning? Yeah, I mean, because, I mean, the... the, the, the oh, he the, took that the, thing away? Yeah, the DC, no, he didn't take anything away. The DC <laughs> went to report that the boy was uh, uh, sabotaging this thing and did that. He by taking that thing away? Yes, yeah, by, by winning. Uh, and so then, you know, so this is why oh, some of us, despite what Nkrumah did, some of us cannot... 100% say that he is really, but if we have mm -hmm. to go through what this nation went through at that time, from the time of um, Obichebi Lamte and uh, J.B. Dankwa and the rest, up to us, the students, mm -hmm. Sam, Sad. you'll be amazed. Yeah. I mean, and then, then the, it's only the good Lord which made some of us survive. Yeah. Yeah. Because you run here and run there. Okay, and, you know, but yeah. tell me quickly, we'll take a break um, soon, but so the leaders at the time who were jailed, how long did, did it take them? Um, uh, I think that um, Kluge and Ismon were there for two years. Two years? Two years at in Swam. In, in, in a small room, yeah. Two years. So the education? Well, they, when they came, that's what I said. When Ismon came, he could no longer pursue his course. He was dropped to another level. 
He could not even pursue. But Kuje was okay. He came back to Legon and did his um, his law. Yeah. Okay. So sometimes, on and off, sometimes they let them go, sometimes they pick them up. No, he did law. Kluge did law. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He became a, a distinguished uh, Supreme judge. Court judge. Yeah. Um, okay, P, you're, you're listening to um, Honorable Hakman Ousuajima on Footprint. We'll take a short break, and uh, when we come back, we'll be rounding up um, on his student life and how he got into um, the, 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 the professional work in agribusiness. We'll be right back. Welcome back to the program. It's Footprint. My name is Sam Atamens. I'm here with Honorable Hackman Ousua Jiman. And, you know, you are hearing for the first time some of the things students had to go through under the so-called uh, preventive deten detention um, act, which, which never made sense anyway. But anyway, they, he survived and he's telling us his story today so we can learn from it that when you have power, don't mess it up, otherwise you destroy people. Um, as he said, Mr. Eastmon, passing through this thing, couldn't survive later on. He lost his life because of somebody's action. But here, when you finally left the University of Science and Technology, what were your own expectations? What did you want to become? Um, I like to thank you, especially for sort of me, letting me sort of touch on the subject of students uh, and how they were maltreated under the CPP government at that time. We could go on and on, but uh, I, this is an opportunity, and then I had it. I've really rushed through it. But it was all because the students opposed one, the proposal that we make Nkrumah president for life. Mm. Two, that um, we, we only have one party state mm. and all these things. And nobody, there was no organized proposition to fight him. So it was the students. Now I remember very well when we went to vote. When we are going to vote, the two voting, the one box is sitting here, it says yes. One box is sitting here, no. And you write a lie. So when you go there, everyone knows. And that's, that's meant to be a secret vote. Secret exactly. Vote. And people were, were very worried. So me, I remember me going there and voting for no in Efigasi. By that time, they are closed the university that, that we can come home and vote. Mm -hmm. And then they told us that 100%. And everywhere it was 100% yes. So I said, where is my vote that I, I, I cast? <laughs> and then there again, they took me to the police station. Hey. You know, so really, we've been through quite a bit. And so although he did all these things for Africa and boosted up, there was, a, there was every reason to that. And there's no CPP man, and I'm challenging anybody to come and sit down and talk and let him give them the details of what happened. And um, you, people like you, for example, would have been in jail a long time ago when on Dan Kroma. So, but I thank you for I'm, the opportunity. I'm not sure if I would have survived jail, man. When I left, <laughs> when I left uh, tech, uh, that time, it was easy. Before you finished uh, school, uh, people came with Peugeot vehicles trying to sell to you because mm. automatically. So I joined the Ministry of Agriculture and uh, worked there. Then I was an economist, then had to go to the Sudan, uh, Sudan in Ward Medini, where they have the agricultural research station. And That's in Sudan? In Sudan, yes, please. Uh, what, Medellin? Sorry? What, what, which city in Sudan? Ward Medini, okay, okay. agricultural research station. Okay. And we saw these huge uh, cotton fields. They call them the Fedans. You stand at one end, you cannot see the other end. And we're producing, that was almost like a cooperative system. Yeah. We want to study. So the water, the fertilizer, the spraying, area spraying was all done. And so whatever your side of plot is, at the end of the day, they paid to you. And Sudanese cotton was quite in hot demand on the world market. And so went to study there. And then came back. So to this finally, was still w while you were with the Ministry of Agriculture. Agriculture, yes, sir. Mm -hmm. And then when I came back again, I was given an opportunity to go. I won an award from the FAO, the Food and Agriculture Organization of the United Nations. 
and um, I was sent to uh, the Netherlands, Holland, at the Institute of Social Studies, and I studied the postgraduate study in agricultural planning. Mm -hmm. Then came to Italy. Then I was I was sent to Sardinia, southern Italy, to also see how they were working the agricultural fields and things like that. And then came back to Ghana. I did about almost a year. Came back to Ghana, and that's where then the British again. I won an award from the what they, at that time they called the, I became a British government scholar mm -hmm. because the, um, uh, they, they, they give a few students every year an award to do that and they, call, they called the British Council the British gives Council award and they took yeah. me to the University of London Y College where I did a postgraduate in agriculture so economics. you did another uh, postgraduate in yes. agriculture that's why this time only masters the other okay, one, I got masters. a diploma, I like a postgraduate okay. certificate. Mm -hmm. This a master's in agricultural economics. Because Wire College at the time, I don't know about now, was one of the huge agricultural Why um, institutions, right? Why? Why College? Yeah. Yes, because it was the, 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 the University of London. It was part was, of the University of London School. Yes, yeah. please. Mm -hmm. uh, it was so divided that uh, you know, the medicine was here, pharmacy was there, and the agriculture, everything to do agriculture was in this college in Kent. And so we studied there. And while I was there, that's when... They, they, they took quite a number of Ghanaians there. Yes, I mean, we have... Uh, the Professor C was there, came there for his postgraduate. Dr. Uh, Martinson was there, I was there. Also a champion came subsequently after me, mm -hmm. also to be there. Mm -hmm. And quite a few of us, Professor Wayosaini, mm -hmm was there wow. and all of that good so then i i was i was well there was a, this advertisement for an economist uh for the united nations and um i applied and um the, i didn't even go for an interview uh they came and they awarded me the gave me the opp opportunity apparently i learned later when the first time when I, was, I did, went to Sardinia mm -hmm. and also to Rome, uh, apparently I did very well. They were very impressed with me. So out of over a thousand people, especially Indian, there were a lot of Indians applying mm -hmm. their PhD, mm -hmm. double PhDs and mm -hmm. things like that. They thought I, I did very well. So they asked me to take on this work. And I so, said, no, I will do my PhD. So when I finished, they said, well, we didn't wait for you. So my uncle, Giamadu, was the chief and my wife, Jay Ado, Begro, Begro, yes, because that's where we were. I know we were domiciled there too. Jay Ado said, "Listen, this opportunity may not come again your way, so take it and while you are there, you do your PhD." He said, "All right." And my wife, my wife went to report me to him. He's supposed to be my bigger cousin, and so I went to room. Like precisely on the 1st of August 1970. Okay. And I, as an economist, then started working. So there. this UN will be the FAO? You mean? Yes, UN, yeah, UNFAO. Mm -hmm. At this time, um, did you have to resign from the in, um, Ministry of Agriculture? or it's you, an you did that to away? It's an interesting story. When I was selected to do this, there was a, a at that time, they called them principal secretary. Oh, yeah. The Minister of the Finance. Which is the chief now, right? Yes. Minister of Finance. And he said that um, they have trained me so I should, be, I should not be allowed to go to uh, leave to go and join the United Nations and what have you. At that time, Bouzia's government was in power. And Dr. Safwadu was the Minister for Agriculture. And so when uh, they wouldn't allow me and the chief direct, uh, the principal secretary of my ministry was also supporting the finance ministry. So somebody told the minister, so I went to the minister and he, said, he called him, he said, are you telling me if this little boy leaves Ghana, Ghana will collapse? That's why I don't want him to go. But if he goes to the United Nations, I'm sure we shall have some benefits, which indeed they did have benefits from there if we go. So, he told me to go. And then they wrote 
to the castle. The principal secretary to the how treacherous they are. They wrote to the castle <laughs> saying that they should stop me from going. My brother was working at the castle. And so he knew. Somebody told him and he knew that. that uh, so I immediately gathered my things. I had come for a vacation and I just went by the next flight. Mm. At that before, time, before they could stop you. And then I we went on to... on Alitalia. Yes, Alitalia. Right. Then I went to Rome and so reported there. So that's how you started. And your, that's how I, I started. Your journey with the FAO. Yes. and uh, A journey that eventually became how many years? Well, uh, 20 years. 20. But I went very... F uh, I worked very hard. Yeah. And so those days you have to work twice as hard mm. or three times as hard to be recognized like what a white man was doing. All right. But God being so good and I had got... Now I realized Ghana education is solid, first class. Because mm. the people that I met there from Philippines, Thailand, all over the place, UK, I mean, they were no better than I was. They didn't better know than Jack, man. <laughs> and within... A matter of eight years, I've been promoted six times. Mm. That uh, probably would be your individual brilliance. Yeah, I mean, me, I was there. It's not a matter of who came first that mm. I have been here. So, no, no. They put the advert there and you apply. They shortlist and go for an interview. Yeah. And at that time, believe me, if you give me an interview, you better be sure that I will take you around my little finger <laughs> and roll you. <laughs> so, in six years, I was. I, I, in eight years, I was promoted six times. Then I became the chief of the Regional Bureau for Africa. Okay, so you've been um, <laughs> listening and watching Honorable Hakman. Very interesting. <laughs> <laughs> Honorable Hakman, who's telling us his stories and taking us through the path. Um, I am sure you have learned something. We will end this episode now, and there will be a second part where he talks about his life coming back to Ghana. Uh, going back into mainstream politics of MPP and later becoming a minister. Um, but for now, thank you for watching and listening. And this has been Footprints. My name is Samuel Atamensa.